Pepsi. Rosemary. So funny. Hillary. Hillary. Carolyn. And Eden. Nancy. Can I just have a turn? Thanks. I love it. That's all right. Nancy. Okay. So this is an intro to gouache, kind of a uh, pastel. Yeah. No, it's a, it's. If it was the last couple of years, it was a gouache. If it was before yeah, that, it was, it was a pastel. Okay. Where is your gallery? My gallery is on Beacon Street. We might have been in here. Uh, yeah. You look kind of familiar. I, I have a feeling I you've probably been in the gallery. Yeah. It yeah. was a few months ago. We were going in and out of all those. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, Beacon a couple of years ago, I took Pilates down there, but. Oh, with uh, with. Um, yeah, she the plumber's wife, yeah. Mike Del Pret. Um, yeah, she's been gone from there for a while. Really? So yeah, so I have a gallery in the Arts District, which is on Beekman Street. I've been painting. I've been involved in art my whole life. I've been painting professionally for probably twenty years, twenty-five years. Um, my husband and I used to travel a lot. I we used to run sailboats oh. in the Caribbean and up around Maine and Newport in that area. So my sister's lived here for about 15 years, and I bought a house a long time because I've got small nephews. And uh, it wasn't until about six, seven years ago that we settled here permanently. Mm -hmm. So then I was looking for a studio, and I found Beatman Street. And so it's both, the front is the gallery, and the back is the studio, and I also teach there. So I paint there every day, and then I teach. In, is it in like a house house? All the places on Beekman are, are old houses. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because it's a his, it's the historic district. Yeah. It's the, where the immigrants lived when they when Saratoga was first uh -huh. built. They were the ones who built the railroads. There. Oh. Okay. So those were Irish boarding houses. Oh. And then it became the Italian section, and it's still quite a few Italians still live in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of history oh. there. Yeah. Yeah. We're hoping to have a walking tour ready at some point this summer. <laughs> <laughs> if I can get the Skidmore kids to give me their work. <laughs> so, so gouache is something that I took up honestly at the beginning of the pandemic um, because it was just looking for something different to do. Nobody was, and it was something that was becoming m more and more um, popular on Instagram. Does every does everybody look at Instagram? I look at it. I don't. You look at it. You look at it. You no, guys do I'm not look at sure sure what gouache it. is. Okay. <laughs> Gouache is opaque watercolor. Okay. All right. Um, it was used extensively in the 50s, both in art school and in advertising, because you could print, you could paint the ads, and they would photograph exactly the right color, because there's no glare. It's a matte. It's a matte medium, so there's no gloss. There's no reflection, so you can get an you can get an honest color to color reproduction. So gouache kind of was relegated to the, to the art schools for a long time, but in the last like four years, it has exploded. There's a lot of young people are using it because you can, you can I think my, my reason is that I think because you can get the same effects in digital art with gouache. So they use, their, they use gouache to do their preliminary like production studies for digital painting. And then they can reproduce it digitally. So that's one reason. It's also a lot of people have started turning away from toxic materials. So with, with gouache and all water-based media, you don't have to worry about using um, uh, turpentine. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, I still paint in oil. I, my big paintings are in oil. But um, I try to, to really minimize, because you, what you'll find, people who've been painting a long time, and this has happened to me as well, if you spend a lot of time in the studio, you can start to get really serious health problems. From, really? Yeah. You should never have an open can of turpenoid or turpentine anywhere in your oh. studio. You can't, even though it says odorless, it's still evaporating into the air. It's a question of ventilation also. Yes. But the yeah. paint itself. Well, the I mean, paint. You, you have no choice but to mix it with some of that stuff, right? No, no. Oh. You you can you can you can do oil painting without using yeah. a toxic medium. The problem is you can't clean your brushes. Oh, I see. Okay. So that's 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 the right. problem. So a lot of people have moved towards these water-based media because they're. I mean, you still have got heavy metals in the paint, but 
you know, you can use water to, to clean up and it's, it makes it you're a lot easier. Painting, you're not painting, you're putting it on your body. Well, I do. Like, it um, goes everywhere. Well, <laughs> <laughs> like, I heard, I don't know, I read something about Van Gogh. He kind of went little Yeah, crazy. I think that's why they... From they lead based, you know. Mercury, they think. Mercury? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he, because he kept his um, paintbrushes in his mouth. Yeah. No. They think that's they why he went crazy. Yeah. So that's how I got to gouache. Um, I started using it, um, and that's why I wanted to do just a quick show and tell here. So is this, is this gouache This is right gouache. Here? Okay, so this is, I use it, like I paint with gouache like I paint with my oil paints. A lot of people use gouache like watercolor. I'll pass this around. This is also cover start ideas for paintings. Oh, nice. In, that's nice. So that's what I keep. That's in. So are these waxed? Are no, they, no, because that's my sketchbook. Um, so that is cold press and this is hot press. So cold press, watercolor paper has texture. That's how you get those nice kind of like, if you want to develop a little bit of texture in a painting, mm -hmm. cold press. If you want a painting that's got very slick type of, you want a lot of detail, hot press. The other reason is like, this is a little plein air painting from last year. Does everybody know what plein air painting is? Mm -hmm. Outside. Right. Outside. A lot of painters have started using gouache for their plein air painting because this is all I need to take, <laughs> oh. right? Everything that I need is in here, including my sketchbook, uh -huh. instead of, you know, the easel and the turbinoid and the bag of paints and the brushes and everything else. So that is why gouache started that way. So you said this is the big one is the hot press? No, no, these are both cold press. Oh, they we don't are? have okay. any. We don't have okay. any hot press paper here. Okay. Um, I just wanted to show you the different materials because usually people are interested in the the types of materials. I'm gonna put these in the middle in case people want extra mixing space. Oh. oh okay. Um, here, let's see what I'll show you. I meant to tell people to bring photos, so I have some photos here. If you've got something on your on your phone that you want to use, you can. Um, this is another option. Do you have this watercolor crescent board? I don't. I large sheets. I do cold press. This is a nice surface. If you want to do paintings, I think they already saw. Are we not all going to be doing the same thing? No. You can. You guys can do what you want. So those are just those are just painting ideas. <laughs> no, I've got different photos for different people to use. So you guys are um, some people are a little bit more experienced with uh, watercolor, and they're the ones who usually kind of have a problem adapting to gouache because gouache is a lot thicker. Um, so I guess since nobody here really has a lot of painting experience. We shouldn't have that problem. Is it similar to um, acrylic? Yeah. Um, that's what we used in the painting set. Yeah, acrylic, it, it, it has a similar body to acrylic. The difference is acrylic, first of all, dries glossy. It also dries permanently. Yeah. So when you use gouache, I can take a wet brush on any of those paintings and bring, bring the paint back up. Oh, okay. It reactivates. It's good in that you can fix your mistakes mm -hmm. or you can do lots of layers. It's bad in if you drip something on a painting, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you have a big, you know, you can use it, but, but like I said, I, that's what watercolors do a lot, you know, happy accidents kind of things. Right. That's not the way I paint with water. Okay. So, um, all right. So let's show you the paint then. Now, what Bob and I decided is that we're going to give you all, um, everybody's going to share. We're just going to lay out some basic paints for you. Um, this is professional gouache. All right, so it's, it's opaque, it's creamy. There are other types of gouache. So there's an acrylic gouache. Oh. Do not mistake acrylic gouache for this gouache. They're totally different things. Acrylic wash is basically acrylic, but it's it, it dries in that. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a wash that I wanted to show you. 
that uh, you can only buy on Amazon. Sorry, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> and this is called jelly gouache. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna. Oh, okay. So this is a student grade paint, unlike this, which is a professional grade paint. It's it's great for kids. It's great for you know if you just want to do play kind of things until you really start learning how to to paint with this because this this does start to get expensive if you want a big thing. Anyway, that that is also another type of water based wash, and it's called jelly wash. And people can fool around with that later if you want. All right. I don't know if you already mentioned that. You might have. Um, does it dry really fast like yes. acrylic? Yes. Okay. Yeah, which is why we have lots of spray bottles here. You've got two there. Here's a couple, two extra. You want to pass them? Yeah, because you guys have got two there, right? Um, just water. Spray. Just water. All right, so this is the way that I keep my paints. And I probably didn't clean off my palette. I did not. Ah! This is why you have to keep things flat. <laughs> so I'm going to need to clean it up real quick. Um, so I keep, this is the way that I arrange my oil paints, which is by color from light to dark. Oh, you know what we need, Bob? We need a trash can. That's a good idea. Um, oh man, because I just sprayed them. Do you have a lot of experience? <laughs> oh, thank you, Bob. I can't believe I did that. I've never... It's all right to throw uh, anything in there? Oh, yeah, yeah you got paint in there. Yeah, going to show us how to paint the picture. <laughs> well, you guys are going to. So this is the way that I keep my gouache, usually a lot neater than this. Did you go to ASA this year? This year was uh, the first time in probably 10 years that I didn't make it. I forget, I don't think we were home that weekend. Yeah. I forget what was going on. But yeah, this was the first year that I never made it. Uh, that's a bummer. Uh, they've changed it a lot, unfortunately. I it was such an event. Like, yeah. Oh my gosh! No, it's it was so much fun. That's that's why I used to do it. It's like yeah. I went for the party. I know. You know? It truly was. That's what everybody said. And it's like now it's like well you can go stand next to your paintings for two hours. I'm like that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay. I'm gonna start here. So in oil painting, the way that I work is, uh, it's a principle called from lean to fat. So like if you had oil paint, you'd use a very thin turpentine, you know, almost like a watercolor base. And then as you start layering the painting, you would, you would add more and more pure paint and not as much medium. So that way you get, you get a thin base and you start building up. That's the way I work with gouache. A lot of people don't. Everybody works with it differently. So it's just I'm gonna show you some people at the end, the end of the class to look at online if you're interested, um, who do some really interesting things with gouache. All right. So oh I didn't I didn't I've been sitting here talking and I didn't even I give this back to you. <laughs> Thank you. So usually I'm in my own studio, so I've got everything within reach. And here I have to bring everything out. Um, brushes. Bob's got a whole selection here, which are great. Um, basically for gouache, you do not want to use really expensive watercolor brushes because those, the paint is too thick. So um, you won't be able to, you'll be very frustrated trying to paint with, with watercolor brushes. Mm -hmm. You also don't want to use bristle brushes because you will not be able to get a decent um, stroke on your canvas. All right. 
So the key to gouache is keeping everything. Oh, we need to. I got here early and it's still in, not all set up. <laughs> <laughs> this is a collapsible little cup that's great for plein air. You can just slowly snap it down. Bobby just handed me paper, right? All right, I'm gonna work from um, from a little photo. This is right on behind Bigman's little alleyway shot. Um, the reason I picked this is because, first of all, I've done it before, <laughs> and second, it has a lot. It has good light and dark, right? So it's got some real clear shapes, and it makes it easier if you if you find a scene that's got very clear shapes and very clear patterns of light and dark, it makes your life a lot easier. Is the tape over there? The white tape? You don't see it? That's right, I got one. Oh, it's right in front of me, jeez. How did you guys hear about the, the workshop? I saw um, it online. Online, Facebook. Oh, yeah, okay. Facebook, that's where I saw it. She told me about it. And I sent it to that's yeah. it. Well, really, I came in for some frame work oh, okay. upstairs, and I saw some kind of an easel here advertising yeah. it. So I thought, kept it in mind. <laughs> and coerced me into coming. <laughs> <laughs> Which she said yes right away. <laughs> okay. Uh, most wash paintings are very small. That's why a lot of people use them for studies. Because to do a really big painting, it's gonna take a lot of paint and a lot of time. Because you can't, it's not like oil where you can get a big stroke and cover and it'll take, you know, it'll end up taking you too long. So that's why most of the paintings that you'll see in gouache are usually not larger than about 9 by 12. Um, that said, you guys know who Diebenkorn was, right? Pardon me? The artist Diebenkorn yeah. from the 50s. He was a very famous uh, abstract painter and he used gouache mm -hmm. on huge, I don't know how, <laughs> but he did. <laughs> He did. All right, first thing I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Can people see? I'm going to have to kind of go out of the way here, I guess. Yeah, for it. Right. Right on the other yeah. side. Yeah. Off the angles. <laughs> I don't know how, what that does for your camera there, Bob. We'll investigate. <laughs> You're going to edit this down, though, right? Yeah. Sketching. I've sketched my whole life, and uh, I have sketchbooks from everywhere. <laughs> and so I, I like to just kind of indicate where the shapes are. Those are just the big shapes. Ordinarily, I would do, I would tint this paper, but it's going to take a little bit too long because I have to use so much water, it takes too long to dry. Yeah. So instead, I'm just going to go in and block in um, the, main, the main colors. If somebody could just give me an idea what time it is. 1.15. 1 mm -hmm. Okay. All right, I'm going to paint till about 1.30, and then you guys should start... Um, we gave you two pieces of paper here so that you can start to kind of fool around before you start trying to do a painting. Okay? <laughs> so, uh, with gouache, I mean, I, I handle this the same way that I handle um, my paint. At this point, I keep it real thin. 
and I'm just trying to establish the big dart shapes. Are you dipping it in water? As you yes, go? right now, right now, uh, this is the wettest this paint's going to be. This would be the equivalent of doing a wash in oil. So yeah, I'm, I had my brush wet. The whole key to gouache is knowing how much water to keep on your brush. Because as this dries, and I start putting more paint on, I want less water. And I always also always have a paper towel in my hand. Does it dry pretty quick? Yeah. Well, not yet. <laughs> almost. 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 Um, yeah, so this would be like like uh, the underpainting. So if you can see, I always, I never really take a wet brush and put it in paint. So right now it's looking like a watercolor painting, but it won't by the time I get finished. And I go through a lot of paper towels, which bothers some people. Anyway. There's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I've tried, um, you know, for oil painting, you can use rags and that kind of stuff, but that has its own problem. You can't keep, you know, oil, oily rags in a, in a studio. I mean, they're fire hazards. So, and you can use, I've tried using like a regular towel and it just gets too wet. So this is, this is the best option. And I usually have a cup of coffee next to me, and at some point, I put my brush into it. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> it's inevitable. I have yet to actually drink it, luckily. Mm -hmm. So you can see here I've done my light, my dark shape. This is going to be a lot lighter, but I wanted to start off being uh, darker because I'm going to scumble over it. I mean, I, this is this me. I, I can see it. I mean, I can lift myself up and see where you're going oh, okay. on the picture, but I don't know if everybody else can see it. On the palette? On the computer. Oh. Yeah. I don't follow the, I don't follow the picture that literally. You don't have no, I only, I only use photographs as a, like a, a starting point. Yeah. The key is... Uh, when I use photographs, first of all, I usually use them in black and white so that I don't have to be, I can use whatever colors I want. Right. Um, that's a good idea. Well, that's what I do in one of my color classes. That's, a, that's an exercise, is to do a lot of sketching with a pencil or charcoal, and then use those sketches to do color paintings. Right. Um, the only time I ever use a photograph, literally, is if I'm doing a commissioned uh, portrait. And so then you have to, you got to be true. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. I mean, that's as easy, as simple as it gets, right? Did you use the same brush for all those colors? Yes. But washing it in, in between. <laughs> Dipping it in, in between. I mean, I'm constantly wiping my brush off. But I also happen to like gray color, so it doesn't bother me sometimes if there's a little bit of other color. Most of my paintings are very, um, very uh, gray. All right, so this is dry enough to start layering over it. That's the difference between this and oil. If this was oil, it would still be very, very wet. So I'm gonna go for a slightly smaller brush. I, I like for gouache, I like to use these square brushes. Bob's got a lot of them here, and these these angled brushes, because you can get these very nice, you know, kind of clean, it almost looks like an abstract, you know, brush stroke. So I'm gonna go back in, and just like I was doing my, my, um, my block in, here's the thing with, this is already starting to dry, right, on the palette. The one thing you don't want to do in gouache is to wet your brush and go into that dry paint. Because then you're just going to be 
lifting up this paint. So you can mix on top of where your color was, which is what I'm going to do here. Right? And then start laying. Is that a rooster? Oh, it's a toy. <laughs> I used to live in the British Virgin Islands and you would hear chickens all the time everywhere in stores. What do you mean by lifting up the paint? So if I were to, see, see how that's dry? If I just took this wet brush, do you see how the paint's coming up there? Yeah, it's lifting it up. That's what you don't want to do. Unless you're intentionally trying to do it. If that was a mistake and you wanted to put another color there, you could you could do that. Hello. Hi. I hope you don't want anything over here. Do you have so gouache paints? So this this then just becomes a matter of adding variations of the color that I was using on top of each color block, right? Does that make sense? I'm not doing anything more than just <clears throat> making those shapes a little bit more interesting with some variation. You see how it's, the, you can see some of the texture? That's the cold pressed paper. If that was hot pressed paper, you wouldn't see that kind of texture coming through, which I like that. So that's why I like to use it. Now I'm going to go back in and do more on that, but right now I just want to block in some of the others. Let's see where we are. I kind of like this. This uh, as you see, I mix everything I do. I mix. I'm not using any colors straight, straight out of the pan here. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm taking the base of that color that I was using, mm -hmm. and I'm just adding more, more yellow to it. Oh, that's too, too dark. I want to have some lighter areas here. It seems very forgiving. It is. That's the beauty of it. Yeah. If you've ever really wanted to paint and just fool around and with without having to, I mean, a lot of people freak themselves out. Like, you know, I bought all this expensive art stuff, and I, this is so much easier. Just get a sketchbook and paint and a couple brushes. So there's a lot of different grasses in here. So I'm really just kind of randomly going to suggest it. Some areas are a little bit darker. And you see, it, it doesn't matter if you make a mistake with that, something like that. Just go back in. And you can lift it. Yeah. Let me just tell you when we get to 1.30. 1.25. 1.25. Oh, okay. Then we'll go a little bit. Um, I'll keep working on this while you guys are painting too. Um, what is she using? Um, the brand? No, just my colors. It's it's in pens. Um, just brushes? No, I I thought about it too late, so I brought some that she is using. Yeah, it's those right there. I brought some, and I also have. No, no, she's. So you see, I do. I, I really like to have my colors graded down. Right so yeah, she takes I use a lot of complementary colors. Okay. That's what she you're had asking. Yeah, that's what I'm okay. thinking. Oh, yeah. Yes. Because yeah. I like. I often like to have some purple in trees for the dark, for the real dark areas. I mean, I'll I'll just keep layering over that. Yeah, instead of just like gray. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's okay. 
Okay. That's the key to getting nice colors, is to use complementary colors. <laughs> well, exactly. You should have color wheel next to you. I have one at home. So as you uh, as you start layering more and more, see how I can look at that paint and I know I'm going to get I know I'm going to get a nice like thick stroke, right? Because it's exactly the right consistency. That's because I put just a little bit of water in it. And Demos are kind of hard to do because you're never going to see the whole painting. Really, uh, particularly for me, I usually, I usually let it sit and I'll go back to it. I'll change something. That's one of the problems of if you put cold wax on the painting, you can't work on it anymore. So you see I'm starting to kind of work on edges here. It's called going into negative space, kind of carving in. What I want to do is add um, I'm going to actually add some here. You think this looks hard? No. no I the picture that she was showing. Oh. Uh, Forest in New Sarasota. Uh, I'm going to do that one. Look for something that's simple. Simple, simple. Okay, so as I keep building, like I said, I, I'm not going to do the whole thing right now, but I will just keep building variations here because that's my main area, right? That foreground. Everything to do looks hard. Um, okay. Are you going to make the house whiter? Or yep, that's just yep. I'm just letting it dry. But you see, I, the, the way that I use it is I, I just keep building layers. Right. right. That's how you can suggest a lot of detail without actually doing detail. Is to use different strokes. Right? So that, so if you look at that, that photograph from here, can everybody see it? Yeah. Right. There's just a lot of. If you try to go in and draw every single one of those leaves, first of all, you'll drive yourself crazy. But also, it won't. It won't even really look that realistic. Because the more you try to make something look realistic, sometimes the less it does. Things look a lot more realistic and a lot more interesting if you just suggest it. Right. So that's where this is a, a wonderful medium because you can get these, you know, you can get a, what they call a calligraphy, you know, calligraphy kind of. You know, you don't have to be. It doesn't have to look like a photo. Exactly. It's like impressionism. Yeah. 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 I mean, impressionism was an actual. It was a way of looking at light. But you see, you see how it's starting to build up. I mean, I would just keep doing that and keep doing that. Um, I'm going to show you how I would do the barn, and then I want you guys to start painting. Do we have to block it in with tape? No. You know, if you want to do a smaller size, you could put a piece of tape across. Oh. No, you don't have to. Okay. I'm just doing this because for demo purposes, if I was trying to do this whole page, we'd still be on the block. So it's just a way to try to do this right. quickly. So there's a technique called scumbling, right? Which is dry brush, like what uh, Andrew Wyeth used. And that's where you're using a dry brush. <laughs> and you're not putting any water in it. And your, your, your brush really does have to be um, dry. When, once you've got any water in the brush, what you're going to get is a stroke instead of instead of a, uh, a scumble. So this is called scumbling. And this is a way of, of creating texture. You hold your, your brush 
You see how it's picking up the texture of the paper? You can do a whole layer. I'll show you a, an artist, a young artist. That seems too much paint. The paint can be a little too wet. But you see how I can add a layer of color and still see the color underneath it. Right? That's, uh, you know, Monet's. Uh, yeah, that's great. yeah, that's nice. <laughs> I like that. that. Would be good. If I were you guys, use this. Yes, that would be very nice. You've got a, you got one, one mat value mats. These would be the same. If that would be the darkest, and then your light looks good. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you want to keep your paint fairly moist without making it too liquid. Yeah, that's cool. That's what I was looking for, something like that. Do you use distilled water for the... I've got water right here. Oh, but we don't wet the paper. It only no. gets wet in here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I got some water on my hands for a second. If I were you guys, um, start just fool around with... Um, how the paint reacts with water. So before you start on your painting, over there, can you pass them down? What's this tape for? Uh, it was just to tape the paper to the board. I'll take it back to you. I just don't want it to fall on the You know what? I'm going to give you guys. Um, paper plates to mix on so you got a little bit more room. Right. There, there's some right there. Yeah. <laughs> Are these? Oh, oh not Stacy. I just sent you your paint. Oh, shoot. I'll give you. Just leave it. <laughs> just leave it. I'll get you some more. Are you both going to do that? Yeah. 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 I can have the same yeah. one. No, a different one. Okay. Can you see that one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, who did I just ruin their brown? First, here. Just use that one. So. Okay. I guess I'll start pulling around. So, here, guys. Do you have to sketch it first, or just? <clears throat> I would. I, I would first get used to using the brush and your paint. How you're going to mix it? Oh. Okay. All right. She so needs paint over here, too. Oh, oh no, I, I have it. Did you get paint? No, no, I he needs water. He needs water. <laughs> oh, I need the big one. Like, the big one. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Yeah, because I've got to do the suggestion. So do you have a paper plate to mix? Yeah. yeah. You got well, one. Anybody need a paper plate? Yeah. Yes. yes. So, let me just show you. Where'd you. Oh, everybody needs paper towels too. I'll bring some around. You're going to want to. You don't ever want to really go like this to your. You want to mix it so it gets to the right consistency, right? Have a paper towel. So, do that by dabbing. Mm -hmm. I like yeah, that's the right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you wet the brush first? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. You need some paper towels. Yep. I'm afraid to start. No, just start. Just stick your brush into the water and go. Yes. Do you have an extra pencil? Yes. Are we supposed to use pencil first? Nope. You can do it however you want. Who, who needs pencil? So, you see how many? Oh, okay. Yeah, I do. It's just not very sharp. That's right. Um, okay. Yeah, you know, okay. Yeah, try not to get too much on your, get too much on your brush initially. You want, use, your, use your paper plate oh, to paper plate. mix. I need the paper plate. Okay. Is this yours? 
Yeah, it's fine. I'm just going to take this one over here. So what I'm going to show you. You didn't get one. You didn't get it. That's why I went right in. Okay. <laughs> yes. Oh, shoot. So that. Yeah, that's nice. That was nice. That was the path, right? Yeah. So, right. So that's going to be one shape, that path. Mm hmm. And then treat that as all one shape, like a blue, light blue, lavender. Okay. Right? So do the blue first. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do we use water to lift the collar? Mm -hmm. Well, you don't want to lift it but yet, right? This is very soft. <laughs> right, but what are you doing? What are you doing? Do I have to <laughs> put the water know, the brush in the water before I use another color? <laughs> yes. Okay. Always clean your brush off before you use another color. Right, I screwed up. That's all right. Here. I put the blue and the yellow. Yeah, try to mix it on your palette instead of in the well. I mean, that's where you're. You oh, want to this keep. I want to mix it in here. No, you want to mix oh, it in here. Okay. I'm pretty bad. I know. That's what I'm like. I just need it. <laughs> a whole thing on this color. I think. I got a not organized over this like I did it. Okay. <laughs> well, that's the whole thing, particularly for. Um, for something like this, it's it's very playful. How would you lighten the color? Oh, there's right? the white. Yeah. 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 Add, just keep adding more white. That's still gonna be dark. Good another. Now, do you guys have paints at home? Anybody? I have no. paints. I'm not these. I, I have watercolor paints. Yeah, I have watercolor. That's very pretty. That's very colorful. <laughs> okay. But you can do a whole painting just like that. Should so for the should I do it all blue or just do a little? Well, here's what you can do. Okay. Do that as your underpainting. Do the whole thing. Do the and whole then, thing. And, and then, then paint over it. Green. Green. Okay. And that'll look like it'll look like Monet. Okay. Oh, to make things more um, purplish, um, do I add more red? red? Yes. Mm. This is this looks like an abstract. This looks pretty cool. <laughs> Thank you. But I, I, you, you've got the colors going. You, you've got the right consistency. Oh, well, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just playing. That's what. That's all it's for. That's all you need to do. What happens when our water gets really? Uh, I'll, I'll dump them out. I know. We're going to be on our background. <laughs> it's going to be three. <laughs> Everything is, nothing is permanent. Don't, so don't worry about it. Darker, darker is fine. Yes, just let it dry. Go on to your next shape. Okay, you see, you see here? Oh, up and down? It's because I've got more paint. You don't have enough paint on your brush. Okay, so try, see how I just did that? Okay. Do that, if that's what you want. If you want that to be the bottom layer. With the blue? Yeah. Okay. What should I do with there you go. the base layer for like a sky blue? Yeah, most skies have a, have a real touch of Either yellow or red. Mm -hmm. okay. Make sure. A little yellow in here, but it's oh, there's a. I just I can't it see the white. <laughs> okay, that yeah, you're gonna need a lot, a lot. A lot more white. Okay. There you go. Okay. <laughs> it was white on white. Oh, I yeah, <laughs> I know that's the thing. 
you'll never get it again. Oops. Yeah, these are really nice gouache uh, paints. Um, M. Graham is one of the nicer ones, and Holbein also is another really nice brand. Now, what are you using that red for? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to make purple, but it's not purple. Okay. Um, first of all, your your brush is really dirty, so you need to either really clean it off or change brushes. And now your your water is like really dirty, so I'm gonna I'm gonna dump that. Okay, so how do you make purple? Red, red, blue. Yeah. And white. Yes. Oh, white. white? Okay. I think, is this really dirty too? Uh, yours is not that bad because you're still working on blue. Well, not anymore. Okay, look, that, that looks good. Okay. I mean, this is what you want. You've got the coverage, right? Yeah. You want to be able to control how covered the paper is. With more water, mm -hmm. you wouldn't see the color as much. Right. With it's less water, colors. it would be very thick. Mm -hmm. Right. And you want Let's it go. thinner. When, you when want it thinner to start off with, yeah. Right. Thinner to start off with, so more water. <laughs> so you can use the light green. Use the green that you use for the dark area and just add more yellow, right? Oh. Good. See, so now that's, oh, now you got a base. Yeah. Okay. Blue and brown. Cool. Blue and brown. You can have a little abstract going there. <laughs> <laughs> so I, it's okay that some w white area. Yeah, no, leave it. Leave it. That's like nice. That? Okay. Yeah. So it's still a little wet. Let it sit for a second. And okay. then what I would do is do that green area on top here. Okay. And do your path. And you can leave, you can almost leave this. Just add a little bit more. Add some little violets in there. Some some of those real intense greens. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can almost just use this as like the base of the painting, right? Mm -hmm. And then add a few. It's kind of suggesting it, right? Rather than actually trying to paint the. Okay. Ooh, that's like a Your water is No, no, it's good. Okay, I like that green, but if you want it to be, when, when you say richer, do you mean more gray? So you want it brighter. You just need yeah. different yeah. shades. Um, so what, you, what would you yellow add? Water. You'd add more yellow, right? Okay. Yeah. I like that color. <laughs> what, the one I just met? Yeah. yeah. That's, uh, oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, you're doing a good job there. And I don't really mind leaving some. Water. No, leave it because you can keep you can yeah. keep adding on. Yeah. But you, you've got the right consistency here. Right. That's And that's the key, is to figure out how much water is in your brush okay. to get the kind of stroke you want. Can I get more blue? Yeah. Does anybody else need more paint? Uh, I'm gonna... Peach color. Okay, so that's your top, right? Yeah. I want to do the leaves somehow. Yeah, wait until it's a little bit drier. Yeah, maybe okay. maybe work on this bottom part, this shape right here. Okay. What would be like the peach? Here. Oh, sorry. Yeah. What would be the peach? Like, the, like this is like a red and... A little bit of yellow and a little bit of red and maybe some of the burnt sienna and then white. Okay. Remember white? Well, that's a lot of yellow. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Right. The red. That looks good. Remember, white 
in painting, white <laughs> grays everything down. Yeah. It okay. lightens it and it grays it. That's a good color. I know, it's kind of hard to paint from a phone, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It keeps disappearing. So yeah, so I would just block in these, block these in the same color. Okay. And then you can go in and do, and do, do more detail. Okay. But just like what your mom's doing, start out, she's like got a base color here, and then you can go back in and, yeah. you know, if you use the same color for both of these, then you can make that little part darker, that little part lighter. Okay. After it dries, right? Okay. That sounds good. Thank you. You got a lot of nice colors there. <laughs> we don't know what it's going to end up. This is a nice color. <laughs> it's just fun to see how they blend. Yeah, well, that's the whole. In the 50s, and I, from what I've heard from people who go to art school now, they still use gouache for color study to teach to teach uh, art students how to mix color. <laughs> I haven't done anything like this in over 20 years. Oh, really? <laughs> so, will this motivate me? <laughs> well, the key, as I've said now, is that oh, not to okay. not to put expectations. Okay, I don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> when we're done, I'll show you some of the things that you can do that are that are fun and here. not stress. Yeah. <laughs> What'd you do? I'm trying to, I forgot to do this green right here. Oh, okay. Um, so, that's a nice color. I would just leave it though for right now. I would, I would wipe off. <laughs> Glad I could demonstrate. <laughs> All right, so now what does that mean? Watch out, it's going to go on you. Thank you. It's the first time I've worn this shirt. <laughs> okay, so that's too. Yellow. That's very gray. I mean, that's a nice color. Yeah. But add more, add more yellow. Um, the yellow is getting really muddy. Okay, so. here, I'll give you another one. So try to take from the very edge with the tip. Make sure your brush is clean when you dip into it. Oh, Use the paper towel enough. Yes. Well, yeah, have the paper towel. Who needs more paper towels? No, I don't because I haven't been using it. <laughs> keep forgetting <laughs> the paper towel. towel that I'm holding in my hand. Now I just I'll show I'll show everybody because everybody's kind of doing the same thing and it's not your fault because you, you know, don't have uh, experience with it. But when you've got colors, you want to you want to take from the edge of, of something, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And then thin it out. You don't want to take a big block because then you're, it's going to be very hard to control yeah. how to change that color. That makes sense. Okay, good. Are yeah. Kids get black. Um, <laughs> that's pretty. Well, you don't want, you don't really want black, right? You, you actually have it. Just add a little bit more blue to that. I don't know if I got too big of a brush right here. Oh. Sorry about that. Ten paper towel on your paper towels. I got some napkins. I guess I'm playing. I'll, I'll get some more. <laughs> I'll, I'll bring you some more. Here. <laughs> yeah, I brought some of the clean That's all right. I got some. I got some more. Take take a little take a little bit at a time. Your paint. Do you see how hard it is to mix this? It's because it's not wet enough. Oh, right. That's why you're having a hard time mixing it. Okay. Oh. Make sure that it's th it's thin enough to water it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See. All right. You're never gonna get black black. You're gonna get what's called like a chromatic black, and that that's about as dark as you're gonna get. I, I don't think you need to go any darker than that. Okay. So it's still wet here. I can I can do something up here though. Yeah. You were gonna do a tree up there, right? So clean off your brush. It's getting muddy. Yeah. I'll get you some more water. Clean off your brush and um. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be real clean. There you go. Thank you. Um, okay, your 
water's muddy too. I'll get you. No, I'll, I'll call her. Hold on one sec. Okay, so what's going on there? With too much water on your brush, right? So take your take a paper towel and dry it off. Yep, and then just let it dry. Are there any more paper plates? Paper plates. Yes. Yep. Hold on one sec. Paper plate? Yeah, right there. There you go. Thank you. Right, so you want to do the green? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, that looks good. Red and yellow. Now I got to do the house. So the green comes right. So. so, white houses are never as light as they look. Okay. They're um, usually a little bit darker than, than you think. Um, so I would I start think off. I'm gonna need more white. So. Start off a little bit <clears throat> lighter than what you would ordinarily. Okay. I think I'm gonna need another here. So start out a little lighter. Start up. No, start up darker. I'm sorry. Dark. <laughs> Burnt sienna make a very nice gray when you add white. Oh, okay. So yeah. I need to clean up my brush. And my <laughs> That's why you keep a pa keep a paper towel in your in your tan and wipe off your brush. Okay. Uh, I think I need more water. So are you trying to get gray? Yeah, so, for the house. Right, so you did that. Um, and that. Paint quick, I think that's the trick. Yeah. I don't know what to do with this. You see how you see how? Oh, yeah. Right. So you did blue and blue and burnt sienna. Yeah. And, and, and white. And, and water mm -hmm. it down a little bit. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, sure. <laughs> right. no, do you need more? Which paint do you need? I'm not sure. I don't know what coat. What I'm trying to do. No, did you paint right over the? I don't know. <laughs> did you paint right over the? <laughs> yeah. Oh no, I think I'm too wet You see how it's starting to get a sheen on top of the uh -huh, that that means it's dry. getting a little too dry. Yeah. Oops. Well, I guess it's supposed to be. What is it you want to do? Uh, I don't know how to like do the end of the path. Um, Here's what I would do. Block in your whole sky. In general, when you've got a background, you want to do that whole background. You don't want to paint around something. Right. You want to paint on top of something. Okay. Skip it. So, what? Pick a color for that sky, do that whole shape, and then what I would, if I was painting this, I would just make that a misty right. purple in the background, okay. so that it pushes it back, okay. right? And then when it's dry, you can paint your tree over that. Wow, you got a, you got an abstract going there. Looks good. <laughs> This is so much. <coughs> I like it. Uh, so what are you going to do? You're going to paint the trees on top of it? That's good. Yeah, that looks great. Um, just a couple things between those. That looks good. Good job. You guys are all doing well. Okay. Um, I'm gonna, I'm start, I'm gonna start That's a nice abstract. It looks like a deep corn. Yeah. Good. Abstracting. Everybody became abstract artists. <laughs> I need a little bit more yellow. I need a little bit more blue. 
Blue and yellow, okay. Oh, I forgot about these things too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Some, uh, experiment done. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a nice color. <clears throat> this? Yeah, for the pen. Yeah, yeah. Why not? Yeah. Sure you can just change it later. Who needs sure yellow? It's getting too Me. Okay, so let's see what's going on. <laughs> oh, my. Okay. That's working. Yeah, I need blue. You need blue. So I can get a smaller get, brush get, get, now. Getting it too wet. Does it matter? <laughs> Like yeah, so now that you're painting over your background, right? Yeah. You want the paint to be a little bit thicker. <laughs> that, that's that's yeah, my, Mine's not looking pretty. Mine I just need That's what I had in mind. Yeah, that's um, good. I think I need more um, blue. And maybe a, I don't know, the books, yeah, it's okay. I'm going to start. Yeah. So you've got a pretty dark green there. So when you go in, you're going to want it a little bit lighter, right? The, the right. over painting. So let me just read you. Okay. I need the blue and the sienna. That's gray. Oh, oh, sorry. And the, the blue yellow. and the yellow. Yeah. <laughs> you might want that a little bit lighter. Lighter white? Lighter white, yeah. Because this is one of the things about gouache is that, is that uh, the darks are going to dry a little bit lighter and the lights are going to dry darker. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what you can do here, you got a nice puddle, and this is a really nice color. It's still a little too dark, so maybe start mixing. This is called mixing off the main color. Do some real light here. You see how I'm taking it away from the main color, right? Because then you can still go back in and mix other colors from that. Uh, <laughs> okay, is that working better? No. <laughs> Your brush is still a little wet. So, dab it. Yeah. Huh. So then add some more paint on. Maybe, maybe add a little. Um, Doesn't look good that color. Uh, a little burnt sienna, maybe. This? Yeah, yeah just a touch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. When when you go to take a color, take a tiny, tiny bit yeah. from the edge, right? Yeah. And mix it from there. It's very small increments to change to change a color. Mm -hmm. well, this is okay, so wash off your brush. Oh, well. <laughs> <And> start <laughs> Green. <laughs> yes. How do you make green? Oh, yellow. <laughs> oh, that's, why. <laughs> that's why I'm so Oh, you just, all right, that's all right. Just that's, fine. that's fine for, for you. Uh, your water is really dirty. Ooh. Yeah, the tree looks great. I like that. I like this one. See that red that I accidentally stuck Yeah, that looks nice. Yeah. Is it yeah. not too bad? I think I need a, a little bit. Oh, thank you. Yep. Yeah. So this is where you can get real um, playful with your brush strokes, right? Right. Just do, try curved. You know, oh, okay. do lighter, do darker, yeah, do, yeah.
all about you know it's back and forth and back and mm -hmm. forth it's like it's kind of like I had an art teacher who said um, it's like making a, a soup if you want a soup that's you know like chunky and got all sorts of textures in it then you want to make sure you keep so what you can do is start kind of just putting little bits of color in there right um, using a different brush stroke okay. versus the idea of covering something, you know, completely. When you've got something that's kind of, you see what I mean? Yeah. As you layer that up, it's going to develop a texture. So pick an area where you want to put some violets, maybe, mm -hmm. to represent going back. And then just use some different brush strokes up here. Just, you know, like some curved. Curved. Okay. Make, make this a little bit warmer, maybe. Ooh, yeah. Right? With, like, reds. So with warmer, to make browns. a warmer green, you're going to have more yellow and more red. Okay. The red's going to gray down, so you're going to want to add more, really more yellow. More yellow. Okay. But, you know, again, very nice. I mean, those are cool colors together, right? You're going to want to go lighter, so let it dry. Let the sky dry a little bit. Yeah. So then you'll put your tree on top, right? How would I, how, would you, how do you do a tree? <laughs> um, a tree shape. You know that's why it's, that's why sketching is so good. Uh, I have I have sketchbooks. I have sketchbooks that are just literally just shapes of trees, right? From ten years ago, I can look at them and actually. So what you generally want to do is see what the shape, what's the general, if you had to put that in an envelope, right, that whole tree, what would the shape be? You see what I'm saying? Kind of generalizing the outside, right? See what I'm saying? You don't, the, the beauty of trees is that no one's ever going to say, you know, I saw that tree. <laughs> and that looks nothing like that tree right. I saw. As long as you have the proportions right, then you can make that tree look however you want it to look. In general, you just have to know where the light is coming because the inside's going to be darker, the outsides are going to be a little bit lighter and warmer. See? See how dark that is on the inside? And then, what really makes a tree look like a tree? <laughs> Are you on your way? Yeah. I'll get you some more paint. Is to really make the edges come alive, right? It's called negative shapes. So you kind of cut in. Now that your background's done, you can lay your tree over and then go back in and add these little indents. Okay. As, a, as a mentor said to me, take the viewer for a ride, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. 
But do you understand that that concept? Look at look at the general shape. Get the general shape down. Then your light and dark, and then your edges. See, easy peasy. <laughs> I need. Um, you need more paint. Hold on, Bria. This is not what I wanted. I need clear water. We don't. We don't. <laughs> Maybe some green or blue. And you need white. Yeah, I don't want to make it. I got to do pink, red, and white. Hold on, come behind you. My name is not what I wanted. What? Okay. Yeah, you're what well, you're adding. Also, there's too much paint, right? Uh -huh. Try to do just some brush strokes rather than covering up everything that's underneath it. You know what I mean? I guess I don't know what you mean. Leave a white over there. <laughs> Did they see it a little too white? Um, I don't. Not here. It's probably rolled off. Thank you. Yeah. Um, who else needed paint? I need white. Thank you very much. Need white? I'm gonna put it over here. No problem. I'm gonna give you a clean yellow right there. The other ones look good. You look good. Good, yes, exactly. What do you think? That's it. No. <laughs> <laughs> what do I need to do the trees? So you need to mix a dark color, right? I would use burnt sienna, blue, and just a touch of white. All right, so what I mean by this, hold on, do you need what, white? I do this. And yellow. How do I make gray again? It's blue. Blue and burnt sienna and white. And white. Mm -hmm. uh, what did you say you mean? I, I'm i just completely unhappy with this color. I want okay. to have like a dark purple, but not exactly black. Right. Okay. Um, I actually, that color doesn't bother me. Um, <laughs> well, actually, no, it's more of a violet, red violet. Yeah. Um, First of all, you need to wipe up, wipe up your brush. I do. Okay, and then mix a clean. What is this? <laughs> the blue. You're not supposed to see any white, right? No, 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 no. You can see white. Oh, yeah. you can. Okay. Take a. Take just from the very edge of your brush a tiny, tiny, tiny little amount. Yeah, you know, that's the too much. That's enough. Good. And now add white. You're gonna add that. You're gonna add that. That's good. That's good. Okay. So now, as you see, it's a little bit more. Yeah. You have to do these kind of color mixing things incrementally right particularly with gouache because unlike oil you can't mix a big thing of puddle of paint mm -hmm. right you know you have to cut which is why you get these really i mean this actually looks fairly nice i like this yeah. it's a uh, very expressive right um should i water this down i have water this down. just a little bit just a tiny so, so make sure you're always yeah i've got one all wadded up in my hand I've got yeah a new one. okay all right you got some little man good Oh, good. That's a nice green. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. There you go. Exactly. You got it. <laughs> I've got a mess is what I've got. Yeah, I think you did a good job. talking about if you just take it and make marks right rather than okay now that's a nice color I actually like that from I the inside too. of the tree yeah I would leave that 
and then put some of this green just strokes on top of that. Some of that don't green? cover, yeah, don't cover okay, the whole some. thing. Okay. Yeah, so exactly. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It looks like uh, demon corn. <laughs> it looks like what? Demon corn. Oh, okay. Anyway. I don't know. I, I've probably seen them before. But... Okay. What is it? It's a Canadian tablet. It uh, has a AT&T on it. Oh. It's like a giant phone. But it don't work in the United States, but it tries to connect all the time. Oh. <laughs> Somebody's trying to call you. Would you say that green? I would just take a little bit of this green and just do a few marks over it. Yeah. Because I actually think this this is pretty cool. Yeah. Right okay, so the green is blue. Yeah, so you got you got like ten minutes. Oh, oh I'll never finish this in ten minutes. Then prioritize. <laughs> <laughs> what what is the most important thing to, to finish? I feel um, like I don't know what I'm doing. Like with, this just looks what do I need to do to make this look better? I actually think it looks so, I think it looks <laughs> fine. I mean what I would do I would try to, I mean that's a nice color. Yeah. Yeah. You've got some real nice colors going there. Um, I might make this path just a little bit lighter. Okay. And that way you'll have more contrast okay. between these. This looks good. Maybe just add a little bit more blues in here. Okay. Blue green. Make that a little bit darker. Okay. Yeah, you could um, you could scumble like a blue green over it or you could just add a little bit more blue to that. Okay. That's what I would do. Do you have any more paper towels? Yep. yep. Yeah, there's a bunch over here. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Who just asked for blue? I did. <laughs> <laughs> now we got the squirrel. Uh, where's your blue? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Could I have a very thin brush? Oh. <laughs> like a pointy, pointy brush? I mean, it's a, it's a complicated subject that you were able to... I have never seen a sunrise look like that. <laughs> well, that's the beauty of painting, right? It doesn't have to really look like... But we have beautiful sunrises this past month. Where? Right here. Oh. From, you know, from my backyard. Oh, nice. The sunrises were gorgeous. This just gave me a, an idea of what this stuff is. This, I've only really done watercolor. Yeah, it, it behaves differently than watercolor. It it's not the same. And usually I find it's that. More yeah. I find that people 
who are trying it, who are oil painters, have an easier time than the watercolor painters. Because they keep wanting to water it down more. Yeah. And it really should be used thicker. Yeah, and I really did water it down. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's the right direction. It's just a little too light. It's not a problem. Okay. You paint right over. <laughs> this kind of gray, kind of in between that and that. Okay. But make sure you can still see some of this. I know. I feel like, um, like I would do like a yellow. Yellow. Okay. I would do like a yellow with just a touch of red and a little bit of burnt sienna. You need to wipe off your brush. Yeah, yeah cause you got too much green. Yeah, this is nice. Did you just do that? Or was that there? No, I just did it. Over. Yeah, that looks good. Think that's good? Or do it more? No, I, I like it. And now we're just go on the path with that? All right, so um, yellow that down a little bit more. And add some white. Yeah, you're gonna have a hard time getting a real pink. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a little touch of my pink. Try and use that pink. I'll get it in here. What should I do, put a little white in there? Yep, add a little white. Yeah, a little a touch of water and a little bit more white. I almost want to swamble it in. Yep. Yeah. Somebody just asked me a question and I walked away. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. What do you think? It's better. Yeah. It well it gives it more contrast, right? Yeah. But now I feel like I feel like this is just all blobs. All blobs. <laughs> <laughs> so I need to just do something like this. <laughs> Um, a lot of times when you feel like something's really disjointed, yeah, a, a way is to go back and um, they call it reunify the masses, right? Mm -hmm. So you could make that whole shape. Oh, you see, yeah, that's what happens when something starts looking like it's all broken yeah. up. It's yeah, it's because you've got too many values going on. Yeah. So, so go back darker. in and maybe, a not even necessarily yeah, darker, I mean, but maybe just, maybe do all purple right here, no, okay. or all purple right here. So Make it a specific have shape. Made okay. it thicker, but... There you go. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Just use the edge of your brush. Yeah. Oh, that pops. It does. Looks good against the green, right? Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> Did you lose your painting? Yeah. There, there you go. go. <laughs> I. And wonder, I don't want to ruin it by putting this. No, you could just bring the tree down yeah. and make that ground. Or you don't even have to. I would just maybe just bring the tree down. Okay. Alright, not to add stress to anybody, but five more minutes. <laughs> we'll start cleaning up. Oh, nice. Yeah, this is good. Let's see if I can fix these. I don't know. What else do now? Make the shape. Do the whole shape of the tree. Try to figure out what the shape of that tree is. In this color or lighter? I would use that color. That looks good. Yeah. Should I add like, more water to it? I, I don't no. Wanna... No. You've got it's the right consistency. Remember, you can always paint over it. That's true. Mm. Bob, do you have internet in here, or um, yeah, mm -hmm. I can log into it if I need. Yeah. To.
I don't need to right now. I'm gonna. I want to show them some stuff on the sure. laptop when they're done. See, if you here's one of the problems with sitting and painting. If you stand up, I can't paint. And step back. It looks pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> well, that's all. That's all point. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that looks nice. It's a it's a very um, it's a very I mean, I can look at that and I say, all right, it's a path going through some deep woods here and lighten the this is. I'm gonna. I just want to fix those bees. I feel like they're just not anything right now. I I wouldn't. I I don't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't really. I'd be more interested in what's what's here. I mean, what you could do is connect these two shades with a misty kind of green that goes out in the back. I mean, to me, that's that's just the yeah. It, the, these look like trees. I don't know what more you need to do to that. I mean, if you wanted to do like a maybe Excuse a little me. bit lighter okay. right here, but remember, it looks like a misty day, so you're not going to have huge contrast. Between the light and dark, right? Yeah. Paint beds. Well, I like the tones of the face. I don't know, but I don't want color to be in this. I think I have too much of a green in this. Oh, okay. I like it more like more. Oh, my gosh. Oh, beautiful. Camden? Oh, I just think I go to Camden all the time. My sister and all the time. Oh, they live there? How oh, nice. Yep. Nice for July and August. Yep. And the rest of the year is winter. <laughs> we used to sail up there. Yeah. Uh, it should. <laughs> Should. Mm -hmm. Bob, where do you want this dirty water to go? Can it go in the sink? Yeah. Okay. I thought I'm wearing a little smock. Did I give you the yellow? Oh, you just need the water. Yes. You're, You're using those right, right now. Right in. Uh -huh. I wore old clothes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think everybody's done a good job. <laughs> For people who say you haven't painted. <clears throat> Bob Ross. Yeah, Happy Clouds. Yeah, have you guys seen the pa I, no, I have to tell no. them my... Uh, Have you seen it? Yeah, my paintings are in the movie. Really? Yeah. It's not really about him. No, it's about a fictional character. But it's supposed to be a comedy. It, it is. Like, it's is sweet. it respectful to him, though? I mean, oh, yeah. Okay. Because yeah. I, I, I don't know. I'm... It's very sweet. It's very quirky. Yeah. It's charming. So when he goes into the museum towards the end of the movie, You'll see two portraits behind him. Those are mine. Oh, and then there's four big paintings and a couple of the shots in the museum that are all mine. That's, That's awesome. Cool. Yeah. That's really nice. Yeah, it's fun. Fun, fun, fun. Very exciting. It was. We all went to see it a couple days ago. And Did the, was, uh, the prop people come to your gallery? Or? Yeah, it was two years ago. They oh, came. Wow. It was during COVID. Yeah, so did mine. Cool. And uh, it was. I wish I didn't listen to you. <laughs> Why? <laughs> No, you're good. Just keep doing, let it dry, and then do more. You need lighter colors no, in there. I don't have any more. I don't have any more colors. Do, do I have all my pictures back? 
Yeah, just do it uh, briefly. Thank you. My really they were on the computer. Trees. They were laying on the keyboard. Oh, okay. Oh, they're, they're probably inside, inside the computer then. You have to go straight. in the area that they used. It was, um, it was fun. Details, so I only just use them as squares. So, okay, so you know, just like one stroke, because you're not you're not really looking at windows, right? right. Yeah. Blue and sienna and white. Yep. Or gray. Mm -hmm. well, I keep getting brown. Add more white. I'm cleaning it. Yeah, I'll ask Bob what he wants. You want me to just leave them out? Yeah, just leave them out. Came out. 
Yeah, I think we will be washing them. Okay. Okay, I think you guys all did a really good job. What happens if you put another medium over it? Does that work? No. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? What kind of medium? Well, I don't know if you just want a color or something. You could, but okay. but why? But why? I mean, that that's the oh, thing. I, I, there, there are some artists who do pastel over. Oh, sorry. Pastel over gouache, which I don't, I don't understand. Those are their two opaque mediums, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people put pastel over watercolor because watercolor is transparent, and then you can add strokes of, and that's a, that's a very pretty combination. But to cover up an opaque medium with another opaque medium doesn't make sense. It's a very expensive way to, to do something. If you just want to have a fast drying base to put something over, then use acrylic. Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's a the gouache has a beauty uh, all its own that's very specific to this medium, and doesn't really lend itself to being layered with. I mean, just that's just my opinion. Other people can. I know Takis Walters does a lot of pastel over over gouache, and I just kind of think it's kind of overkill because because you're taking you're taking away the matte quality of the gouache. And at the same time, you're taking away the iridescent quality of the pastel because you can't see through to the paper. Yeah. Right? So to me, it's kind of taking two mediums and working them to their least desirable Watering situation. Yeah. Now, a lot of people will, um, a lot of people will use acrylic or acrylic gouache for under oil painting because it dries so fast. But. So I just want to show you two things. Um, some things that you can do with with gouache if you were to do it like every day. Little abstract studies. You know, these are things just to fool around with color. Little plein air studies. Um, there, I had a couple months during the pandemic where I just did. I did a twenty minute. Just twenty minute studies from where where oh, in nice. your kitchen, oh, in your bedroom. Oh, you know, or I do master copy studies. It lends itself to a lot of different exercises, right? You know, just little very simple kind of things to experiment. It's a really it's a great experimental medium. How do you block off the little square? It's all tape. It's Everything all tape. is taped off, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, this tape here? What kind of tape? Uh, yeah, artist tape. It's like this tape and down watercolor. Is this artist tape? tape? Yeah, it's artist tape, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You've, you've got to be careful taking the tape oh. off the paper, which you'll see in a second. Um, like my this new sketchbook, I'm using for abstracts for, you know, taking a something from life and just trying to abstract it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, if you keep a sketchbook, you can just start to. To you just paint play right on those? Yes. These are watercolors. You've got watercolor sketchbooks here, right? Do you have mm -hmm. the tape right on there, or do you take the tape off? I tape on it, and then I take the tape and then off. You take it off. Yeah. So that's what I use it for. There are some really incredible um, gouache painters, and I'm going to show you a couple. Uh, this guy's name is Squash Gouache. <laughs> Squatch Gouache. <laughs> uh, he's a very handsome <coughs> fella. Anyway, he uh, he teaches digital art at Pixar. Pixar. He's a he's a California painter. This is Gouache. He does his regular paintings are all done in in Gouache. He does these nocturnes now that are really beautiful. Oh wow! Yeah, really beautiful. Um, but he's another one of these, he teaches digital art at, at Pixar. Um, I was talking about the layering up of scumbling. Um, this woman actually studied with the previous guy, but she, uh, I'm going to bring up something. Did you see the texture in that? That's gouache. Oh my gosh. So it's just, she Is does, all she, scumbling? She takes a dry brush, dips it into different paints, 
and just starts to build up the layers. Oh, is that like, is that like oh. a, right. what they call stippling? Stippling is like pointillism, right? Where you're yeah. doing a point to create a form. This is a brush technique where you're 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 keeping your brush oh, okay. parallel, yeah. horizontal to the paper or to the oil painting, and you're just you're you're just skimping over the texture. So what is and the that's term what again? leaves. What is the term? Scumbling. Um, another painter to look at who does really beautiful gouache work is uh, Brian Simler. He's another, actually I think he lives in the Northeast. A lot of these painters are out in California. Um, yeah, now he, I mean you can see he does, he does a little painting a day, right? Those are his, those are his studies, but I'll show you. Uh, he does a lot of these these little um, here we go six by six. Yeah, see, he does these little these little gouache, and then he does he takes that sketch and he makes a four by six foot acrylic painting. Wow! Just with that simple those oh, simple little forms, wow, right? <laughs> do you paint every day? Yes, I do. <laughs> if I don't paint, I sketch. Um, yeah, his his forms are very simple, right? I mean, it doesn't take a lot. That's what I was trying to say to you. It doesn't take a lot to make a painting. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a you know it's it's a contrast of either colors or edges or shapes. It comes down to very basic things. And the last one I'm going to show you. Are they the um, hardest thing to paint? Clouds? No, they're very easy. Oh, or water. <laughs> I think water is harder to paint if you want to paint it realistically because there are certain physics to water. Reflections behave in a specific way depending on the water condition. They are, they're either longer or shorter, they're broken up or they're not. Um, dark colors are lighter in the water, lighter colors are darker in the water. If you've got a wave, there's I mean, it's a, there's a there's a physical thing that you kind of huh. need to know if you want to paint a lot of water. You gotta see it to that point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> if you want to do it abstractly, you know, I mean, you can do that. All right, this guy. Um, these are all these are all gouache, and they're they're all very simplified, mm -hmm. yep. simplified mm -hmm. landscapes. It lends itself to that because the, the colors are a little bit brighter. And you can see but while you're playing around with it, you can get these sharp mm -hmm. edges, these kind of calligraphy strokes. I was surprised at how intense the colors go down. Yeah. Yeah, they do. But I mean you can you can mix them just mm -hmm. like oil. Right. Anyway, there if you're on Instagram, there's a ton of gouache painters on. Um, I don't really have time to show you, but I was just gonna show you the uh, um, the, what I do is I in the way? Yes, I don't paint. Don't forget to bring it. You don't have cold wax, do you? Um, I have Dorland. Dorland's I always thought was um, the brand name. Dorland is a type of wax. And this is a very soft, supple wax. And the way that I, I take a painting and I do each with a, with a clean linen rag I lightly put a layer of wax over. I do it section by section so that the, it doesn't get smudged. Because remember, this is it will react again to anything liquid. So you got to be very careful, and then you let it dry and you can buff it. So it makes it a little bit darker. Does it put a shine on it? <clears throat> Not really a shine. It's a clear. It's a clear coat. I would still call that matte. You know, it's a flat matte look. But I don't have to put this under glass. Otherwise, this has to be matted and put in a frame and have a big piece of glass on it, mm -hmm. which I don't, you know, having run a gallery myself, I, I understand why people don't like glass. It's hard to hang. It's hard to keep clean. Mm -hmm. It's heavy. It reflects. Well, watercolors look nice under glass. Well, you have to put what, I mean, there is a watercolor varnish. Um, I kind of was fooling around with some spray varnishes, and I, I didn't like the way that it, it worked. So... But anyway, so that's squash. So where is your, your gallery? It's on Beatman Street. Yeah, but where? Um, you know where the local is? Yeah.
<clears throat> if I was gonna do anything, I mean, this this is very nice right here. Yeah, I'm kind of happy. This is very nice right here. Yeah. If I was gonna do anything, I would I would oh, yeah, that, clarify that yes. that shape. Uh, okay, I'm losing everything. My phone is right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it too late to ask for? I know. <laughs> <laughs> too what? Too late to ask. I wrote totally ruined this tree. I'm trying to make it a tree. <laughs> I, I I lost the What's making. What's green? Green? Oh, you need a little blue? What is it? I need yellow and yellow. You need blue and yellow. 